Good evening, folks. Welcome to Alien Addict. I just want to say a massive thank you to each and every one of you that is sharing the videos out, that is liking the videos, hitting the bell, the f wh whatever you're doing on these videos, it's working because Alien Addict is starting to rise up. You know, we we're like 600 subscribers up this month, which is... It's amazing for a little channel like this, especially a UFO alien related channel. They don't tend to do well these days on YouTube. Um, not new ones anyway. I know I'm not new, but it's not a big channel. But you guys are helping it grow. So thank you. And I would like to say a massive thank you to Anti Media Zombie, uh, the new Patreon of the channel. Um, I Every new Patreon, I create a little bit of artwork and... Uh, just with the name Zombie, I decided to do this, which is, is a, he's an alien grey, and I basically took about, I don't know, it must have been 20 to 30 pieces of meat, uh, pictures of zombies, and kind of pasted it into this, it was, it was kind of a cute alien grey, but now it looks, yeah, a little bit sinister. But yeah, I hope you like that, my friend. Well, I know you do, because you, you've actually said you do. Um, but guys, um, if you could keep sharing uh, the videos and hitting the Stephen Greer, Homer Greer, thumbs up, uh, that would be brilliant. And if you want to check out the Patreon page, it, it does mean the world to me, because it means one day I may be able to leave the day job and do this full time. Anyway, guys, enjoy the interview. And there's... A lot more interviews to come. I'm currently editing for interviews as we speak. Uh, that's interesting you said that because every time I tell this story, I get just a super sense of heightened anxiety. Like, you know, like I was telling you about music and stuff. I've been playing shows and stuff, playing music in front of people forever. You know, like I, I don't get nervous very easily. I can perform on the spot you know but every time I tell this story like I I start kind of getting tight chested and and just my anxiety level just shoots up so bear with me you know but it's it's fine that's a perfect introduction to the video so we're starting now <laughs> Zach yeah. Zach welcome to Alien Addict my friend um you've got a great story um an interesting story uh but before we go into before we delve into that can you tell us about what's going on behind you? Well, there's a whole bunch of die-cast metal and rubber behind me. <laughs> I've been collecting Hot Wheels and die-cast for 30-something years. So, Can you give us a spin of the room? Yeah, I'll try it here. <laughs> it's, it's crazy to me, even. I won't lie. It's, it's a little much. That, oh mate, that is I am I am so jealous right now. We've just had a conversation, guys, before this, and um, I, I I got my little boy Hot Wheels uh, <laughs> from being a very early age, probably too early. Um, had to supervise him with them, but I love Hot Wheels. So you are you've you've got a, an Instagram page page and a YouTube page. Where can where can we find you? Well, my my name on both YouTube and Instagram is Zach Diecast Manser. It's Zach underscore Diecast underscore Manser. M A N S U R. That's where you can find me. Check what me sort, out. What sort of stuff is it you you do on there with the Hot Wheels? I just I'll put my cars like on a diorama or whatever, and just take kind of close up pictures of them and stuff my I'm, I'm mostly on instagram on youtube i'll i'll take a couple of videos like once every few months i'm not that active on youtube but mainly instagram Instagram. i, I post there like every day multiple times so <laughs> so if i find like a super rare what i think might be a super rare hot wheel you're the man to ask yeah hit me up i'll tell you what it's worth <laughs> and do I, I take it i keep it in the box <laughs> You know, they're, they're meant to be open, man. You know, if you ask me, <clears throat> you know, like I just showed you, most of my stuff is in packages, but 
I don't know. I they they'll keep their worth. Open it, man. <laughs> yeah, I'd just I'd just be saying. I've got, I mean, I've got a really good friend of mine um, that I play games with now and again. Uh, he's massively into Hot Wheels, so he'll really appreciate watching this. Um, so I, I want you to like take us way back to be, the beginning of this, where this story actually starts. Um, maybe a little bit further back. Okay. Going. Well, I guess if I go way, way back, it I met the person involved that was with me because I play music and I was looking for for people to play music with. I was into punk rock and stuff and where I live, there's not really a whole lot of people into that stuff. So it took me a while to find to find people to play with. Uh, so I finally did, you know, and this is like the end of middle school, beginning high school. I, I meet a couple of guys, uh, their names are Aaron and Matt. And so we, we started a band called Snot Rockets. We, we just stopped playing together, like, like, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, you know, we, and we got together in like the, the mid to late nineties, you know, so we we played for a long time, toured the country and stuff, you know, like been all over the place. Uh, anyways, um, you say so we that, can find this. Sorry, you say we can find some clips of this band on. Yeah, yeah. Look us up on YouTube. It's yeah. it's not your cause, punk rock. Well, it's send me some links. I'll put the links in the description for the guys. Totally. So that's that's how I met my friend Aaron. Um, so we were practicing playing music all the time playing shows and stuff all over town um so one day we were getting to we you know we were going to get together and, and practice music so we were going to go pick up matt the bass player at his apartments and me and my friend aaron we went to his apartments to go pick him up and he was only supposed to be you know 10 or 15 minutes he he wasn't going to take very long supposedly so we went out we went to his apartments and sat in like this playground area with uh like big toys and stuff slides and stuff well, we I just like on in that. yeah yeah and we we sat out there waiting for him, and it it was during the day, you know, it, the it was pretty bright outside, um, and that'll be important later. We are sitting out there for what seems forever. When I think back to this time, and this this let me go back. This is about 1998 or 99 or so. <laughs> I think 99. It's a long time ago. Um we were we were sitting out there waiting on him to come out and it seemed like it took forever i mean my perception of this took forever and more and more time goes by and my memory of this i remember it being kind of twilightish kind of you know almost dark outside so we had to, you know, we had to have been there for a long time is what it felt like. And we were sitting there, me and my friend Aaron, we weren't really talking much as far as I can remember. We, we were just like sitting there. And I started hearing a noise that sounded like an airplane, you know, and I didn't think much of it. We live in a town that has a small airport with like small airplanes you know like Cessna type airplanes and stuff flying around all the time all day every day so I didn't think to look up at anything I didn't care just an airplane and more and more time goes by and I noticed that this airplane noise wasn't going anywhere like you know what I mean? Like the Doppler effect of a of noise yeah, going by. Yeah. But I just noticed it was, it, it sounded like it was in one place. So I finally kind of have the wherewithal to, to look up in the sky 
and see what what the heck was going on and i look up and straight above my head is an airplane the airplane that's making the noise but the problem is is this airplane isn't moving <laughs> it's that's stuck in one place above my head it it wasn't swaying you know like in the wind or anything i mean it was it was locked in one place but it but it was an airplane how, how it, close do what how close was it to you i mean it had to have been like 500 feet if i had to guess you know 500 feet 750 feet or so above my head directly above us uh it had like the the red and blue lights on the wings and the strobe on on the the tail or wherever you know i i'm not an airplane guy i, I just know that those lights were on it it looked like a cessna airplane that that I see all the time. Like I said, you know, there, there's an airport nearby. It, there's no way it was a helicopter. Uh, I, because it was, it was dark. It was getting dark outside, but it was bright enough to where I could see the shape of, of this thing. And it, it was an airplane. I could see the wings. I could see the lights on the wings. I mean, and like I said, and it was still making like the engine sound of a, of a Cessna airplane. <laughs> it just wasn't going anywhere. It was locked in in one place. Just like one tone. Do what? Or is it just like one tone that you're hearing from the engine? Just like yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, it wasn't like a weird buzz or a hum. I mean, it was like an engine, an airplane engine, running. And this thing wasn't going anywhere. Okay, well that that's weird enough. <laughs> and still, me and and my friend. It, this is 21 years ago, okay, but I, what I remember is me and my friend, we weren't saying a word. I mean, I wasn't talking to him. He wasn't talking to me. I, I didn't say, like, hey, are you, do you see this? Nothing. And you I just didn't. just staring at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I remember, well, I did, that's, that's another thing. I don't remember staring at it. I remember looking up at it and just being like, okay, there there's an airplane just like sitting above my head and it seemed like it had been there for like 10 or 15 minutes <laughs> just not moving and like i said that that's weird enough but i think the weirdest part is that i didn't say anything about it my friend didn't say anything about it and we didn't say anything about it for like 10 years 10 or 12 years passed by and one day we're we're playing poker. We had like a, a weekly poker game that we played, you know, every week for, for several years religiously. And I, for some reason, it, it, that moment popped in my head and, and I looked at him like, Hey, remember that time that we were waiting on, on Matt to come out, we were going to go jam and play music. And you remember waiting on him to come out and there was an airplane just like hovering <laughs> above us. Do you remember that? And I expected him to be like, what, what the hell are you talking about? Without hesitation, he looks at me and says, no, but I remember seeing a UFO. And I go, okay, I, I don't know if you're thinking about the right, the same time. It was like an airplane, like, but it wasn't going anywhere. Do you remember that? <laughs> He's like, no, but I remember seeing a UFO waiting out there for him. And, and oh yeah, well, I told him that I, that we had seen this, that I saw the airplane. I asked him if, if you saw this airplane it had been above us for, for, you know, several minutes yeah. just hovering above me. I was like, yeah, Did I was you like this thing? and he said, no, but I saw a UFO. And he said that he saw this, just a ball of light, you know, with no, it wasn't in the shape of an airplane or anything. And just a ball of light shoots from like the north side of town directly above us with, I mean, like he said, it just caught his eye, just shot directly above us. And 
he said as soon as he was able to look up at it, this thing darts off in the same direction that, that it that it came. It darts off and is sitting on the south side of town. And he said when he looked back at it, it just boom, it's just gone. Just he didn't he said he didn't see it go any other directions. It just blinked out, it was gone. And he told me, you know, at this poker game, he said that he thought that I saw the same thing. And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't remember any of that. None of that. I remember an airplane sitting above us. And he thought he thought I was crazy. You know, I was like, <laughs> I, I have no idea, you know, so why I would. You were crazy for seeing an airplane. Yeah, yeah, sorry, UFO. Yeah, go figure. So and did he did, did the memory trigger him then, uh, or was he uh, did he want to talk to you about the UFO before? Well, that no, we never discussed it before that before that poker game. Never this is about won. ten years after. Yeah, and and the only thing that I can think of now, he he died in February. I I wish I could ask him more questions yeah, about it. I like said before, know. man. I'm sorry to hear that. It's, it's, I appreciate. I mean, that, that is. Yeah, it, 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 it was a tough, a tough one. It's tough. Uh, um, I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could do more than just ask him about the UFO thing. I wish I yeah, could just. Awesome. I wish he was still here, but. Um, you know, he, the only thing that I can think of is that he thought that I saw the same thing and that, you know, why was there any reason to, to talk again about it? You know, or, you know, that's all I can think of, even though he saw a damn UFO, seems like he'd talk about it all the time or something. But it, it, you know, like I was telling you earlier to this day, I, when I tell people this story, I, I I tell him I I've never seen a UFO, you know I all I've seen is a weird Cessna airplane locked above me for ten or fifteen minutes, <laughs> you know. But apparently my my friend Aaron he he saw something completely different, you know what whatever it was UFO whatever he saw a, a ball of light, you know shoot directly above him and then looked up and shot away and blinked out. So. I mean, I've heard of illusions where a plane can look like it stood still, but not for 15 minutes or whatever he said it was, you know, 15. And um, <laughs> not when somebody else sees something completely different. Also, you have seen uh, video clips on the Internet where there's people that have faked a, a plane stood still and some right. just have the illusion of it standing still. Um, but, but in... As far as you know, that thing was com well. It wasn't just completely still. It was co it wasn't make the sound wasn't changing. You're right. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't going away or coming or anything. It, and when I think back about the experience, I don't remember hearing it come or hearing it go or anything. I I just like I said, it was 21 years ago, but. <laughs> I mean, I it, I can remember things from 21, 31 years ago. This, you know, I don't remember it coming or going. Uh, and another another thing about the story is uh, Aaron, he said that, that we weren't there waiting for him for very long. And I asked him, you know, so how long were we were we waiting out there? And he was like, I don't know, like, like 10 minutes, five minutes or something, <laughs> you know. But my memory of it is that we arrived fairly early in the day. I mean, the, the, I, rem, I can remember the sun being up pretty high in the sky. It was bright. It was, it was hot outside. And, uh, you know, also I don't remember leaving his apartments or anything either, but I remember that it was dark outside, you know, by, by the end of this experience, whatever it was, you know, so it, it felt like we were there for for hours, you know. And it, it when I tell people this story, they 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 ask me like, "Oh man, did you get abducted?" Or you know, you you, you lost time, man. That's classic time loss. Blah, blah blah. 
uh, you know, I, maybe it was, I, I don't plan on getting like hypnosis or anything, you know, I, I'm not interested really. I mean, I'm afraid of what, it, what it would uncover, no. <laughs> but, but at I the had, same time, uh, John, a guy I interviewed, um, a few nights ago, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago there's time for you i don't know what time of day it is um but he said the same thing he doesn't want to get hypnotized because um he's just, he's afraid of what may come after the video and the response he decided he's decided that he is going to get hypnotized but um i understand that completely why you would not want to do that um you know, I mean, I guess it is what it is, but I, I'm just not interested in it, really. But I guess it, it would be nice to know, but I don't know. I'm one of those people that I think that uh, regression by hypnosis, there, there's a lot of suggestion that can be involved. And just the fact that it happened so long ago, <clears throat> and I've had time to kind of you know, think about different scenarios and things. How do I know that whenever I am regressed, I'm not just going to say something that I think happened or, you know, I, I don't know. I, I've never been hypnotized. I don't know. I don't know how it works, but it just the power of suggestion is, is powerful. I know that, but <laughs> who knows? I mean, I, I, I don't, I mean, it works differently on, on everybody. Um, some people are really, susceptible to it um i'm quite susceptible to it but i I've, i'm how i've had it done before um but i kind of i remember it and i i, I just remember feeling willing to do the silly things you know that they, that he, he wanted me to do um you know so it was an old teacher of mine that hypnotized me for the first time and it was i can't even remember what it was something stupid with the chairs and some books and put my hands in the air and pretending that it's raining or whatever and i just i was it, it was almost like i was acting it out that i remember i remember uh, feeling it like a strange feeling when i was going to to sleep so I, I, being hit, like when do you remember being under hypnosis yep i remember all of it so I, I i can't i can't understand how anybody could not you know when they said you won't remember this Right. I, I I don't know if I believe in that because I remembered everything. Huh. Absolutely everything. Absolutely everything of that experience. And this is an experience I probably shouldn't have done it actually because I was 16 years old and just leaving school. Uh, and I don't think the teacher should have done that, but he did. And he, he was a cool teacher and he did it in the middle of the class. Uh, I, was once, I was once hypnotized on stage as well uh, in a nightclub. And I don't know if I was just drunk and wanting to act up or not, but I still felt the strange feeling at the time. Um, huh. But I don't, know a... if that, I don't know if that happened, but sorry. You don't, uh, I understand weird. why you don't want to get hypnotized because you might just think, yeah, it might just make you kind of bring up a memory that maybe is not there. That, yeah, I'm, I'm worried about that mostly. It's like, you know, how do I know that I haven't had enough time to, you know, make something up that could have happened? Or, I mean, yeah, I would like to know what happened. Well, and do, who do you do that? Do you make things up? <laughs> if I'm hypnotized, I don't know. No. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if people do or not but i you know i've watched enough things about you know seen things on tv and stuff about hypnosis and and you know heard that that people can be manipulated and suggested things and you know people that that are regressed about alien abduction abductions and stuff they they said that there's a possibility it could be just things that they've they've made up you know from mm -hmm from people suggesting that something happened to them, that that then comes out of their own mind as a false memory, you know, but who knows? I mean, I, I just, I don't know where to even begin, who to, who to look for, who to ask, you know, to, to be regressed, hypnotized or whatever. But, you know, the, the more I think about it, the, 
you know, I, I may want to because I, I am curious as to what happened. I, I mean, it, some, something had to have happened, whether it was to me or my friend or, or both of us. You know, I mean, that's just weird for me to have one experience and he to have another at the same time, you know. So uh, that really that's what scares me about it is like I, it's, you know, what did happen, <laughs> you know. So what was the, the young man's name that you're waiting for? Matt, he uh, he's he's the bass player. Um, he lives in in Texas now. Um, we he's he's also you know one of my best friends. Aaron, uh, he was the guitar player of the band, and he he's my he was my best friend like you know, like brothers. Uh, and Matt, you know we we're also you know very very close like best friends. You know so. So, you, you and is it Aaron? Yes. You're in the park, and you're both looking at this Cessna that's uh, making just just the noise, um, and it's still for fifteen to twenty minutes. Did you say? Like ten or ten or fifteen yeah. twenty minutes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, ten or fifteen minutes or so. <laughs> did. Do you remember it going? No. So you don't but, remember it like suddenly moving or? Uh, no, I don't. I don't remember it coming or going. You know. Uh, um, Do you remember I, Matt coming to meet you? No. That that's another weird part about the the whole thing is I don't remember anything else about that day or night I, I, apparently we we must have gone and, and practiced playing music you know uh, but i i don't remember it i mean i i chalked that up to it being 21 years ago and living a bunch of life since then you know i i don't know but uh, i suppose for matt it was just a normal day you know he's coming out to me does he does he, does he, re, does he even remember the situation probably probably not i mean because it was just another another day that we would have picked him up to go play music, you know. And actually, I, I don't know if Matt even I don't Aaron might have told him. I don't I don't know if if we even told Matt about the the story, you know. I don't remember I don't remember telling. So you've not him. even told him. To this day, I have personally not told Matt. The story. Well, you can send him the video link to this. Well, <laughs> it's telling the story. I will. I'm up. That's really like, weird. share, and subscribe. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a good point because I, you know, as close as, as friends as we are, I've never told him the story, but I, I've only told a handful of people the story, anyways. You know, I, that's changed now. But <laughs> I'm just wondering if he could like kind of say. Um, saying that it's that long ago I can't remember being at college and the stuff that I was doing right. <laughs> I can remember some of the stuff that I was doing but I can't remember much about it it's all it's all a big hazy blur um, but can I ask had had you and your friends you know had any alcohol or anything at the time or oh god we, you know this Not that it changes the story. I'm just asking. I was to say this shouldn't discredit anything, but we uh, you know, mushrooms did all the normal bad things that everybody did, <laughs> you know, that everybody else did. I guess. I mean, yeah, we we would drink and do other things all the time, but that day, I can probably say with a hundred percent certainty that we hadn't been drinking during during that experience Nothing that could make you both hallucinate different things no no i mean we were like 15 and 16 years old yeah. and it was hard to get alcohol <laughs> for us so i i guarantee you we probably hadn't done I have anything to ask you know just, I just it backs your story up even more um <laughs> but um i'm just wondering it would be great if if matt would remember meeting you and saying oh when i came out there was 
I remember the airplane flying over, but I don't know why he'd remember that in the first place. Um, right. But, you know, it's um, it's weird yeah. that, you're not, that you've not told him yet. That is that is really weird. And you should tell him, man. Think about it. Yeah, I I want to tell him, and I want to ask him, like, <laughs> was it was it day or night? <laughs> you know, when we left, he probably wouldn't even remember that. Honestly, I mean it. Like I said, it was like any other day. Nothing and special, but no, there were no gig or anything that night. It was nothing special about. It. No. Just not this. No, yeah, just just another day, which also makes it even stranger that my the Aaron was able to, you know, when I when I asked him, like, do you remember that time we were waiting on Matt to, and I we saw an airplane, hoping he'd be like, yeah, I saw an airplane above us. It was weird that he was able to just instantly be like, no, but I remember seeing a UFO and blah, 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 blah. So it being just another normal day, normal night, whatever, it, I, I've i always thought it was weird that he was able to instantly know what I was talking about, even though I said a hovering Cessna for 10 or 15 minutes and he saw something else. So I... Like I said, man, I, I wish I wish he was still here because I want to ask him so many more questions about it. And the the poker game where I asked him, this was also ten years ago. You know, like yeah, a lot of a lot of time has passed, and that that you know the story itself was really weird. But I I think the weirdest part that that bothers me the most about it was the fact that I that I didn't think it was strange enough, you know, to talk about a lot. I mean, I, I never asked him about it. We never discussed anything about it for a decade. And then I asked him about it a decade later and then another decade passes and I'm still, i still don't say another thing about it. I mean, after the, the night of the poker game that I asked him about it, you know, another 10 years has passed and never discussed it after that either you know and not once not one time so <laughs> it, it's probably hard to remember do you do you remember asking him i mean i, mean, I know he said it was a ufo do you remember asking him um what the ufo looked like it, i didn't ask him what it looked like because he because he told me that it was just a ball of light he because i i explained to him that i what i saw was an airplane i could see the silhouette of it everything and he said he he saw just light you know shoot above us and then look up and as soon as he looked up it shoots away and is sitting on the south side of town uh, actually above a, a garbage dump outside of town he said it it shot over over to that area and as soon as he was, as soon as he was able to look over at that it just went out i mean like it didn't shoot off or do anything it just was gone it just i guess you know blinked out or whatever were you already interested in ufos at the time do what was you already interested in ufos at the time no you know i mean i i've always liked uh space things i mean like i'm not a big tv guy but when i do watch tv i watch like documentaries you know like space planets and stuff like that so i like the subject of ufos and aliens and stuff but it, at the time of the experience and the time of me asking my my friend aaron about it it wasn't something that that i was into at the time it, i've recently gotten in to the subject because there's so many good channels like you and a few others on on youtube that i've really gotten into and it actually watching you guys your channels and stuff has reinvigorated you know my my interest in my own story which is what made me want to tell it you know so besides that no i mean like i that's not something i would ever like think about a lot you know so Zach, in your, in your opinion, what do you think? What do you think happened that night? I know you don't want to kind of say, but you must have a you must have a thought. You know, 
I, I think something strange did happen. I, you know, I, like I said about being regressed, hypnotized, I, a part of me does want to be, but a big part doesn't just because I'm, I'm kind of scared to find out for sure what happened. Cause I, I think something strange did happen to me, <laughs> you know, like for me to have seen it the way that I saw it and just the whole experience. I, I think maybe either they did something to me while I was sitting in that part, or maybe they, they freaking took me somewhere for all I know. I, you know, yeah. that, that's, that's the best way I can answer it, you know, but that's, that's the other thing I'll, have I you, don't. Um, have you done any research on this recently in terms of like looking to find out if there's anybody else that has a similar case? No, but I'm always, like I said, watching like the UFO channels and stuff, you guys and, and whoever else, just hoping that somebody will have a sim- similar story. I've, you know, I've never heard one like it, you know, so I. I I'd definitely know. keep an eye in the, out in the comments section because um, oh, some of the interviews that I do, there, are, the, there tends to I'm finding that there's a pattern of some people are coming and having similar experiences, whether they're, they're telling the truth or not, I don't know, but you know, it, mm-hmm. there there is people that are saying that they they are seeing some similar things to what some of the the guests that come on are seeing, and, and there's, there's something about this your story that is it, it's just intriguing because it's not it's not far-fetched and I, th- I don't think I don't think the way it's gonna ha- the way um these beings whatever they are I don't if I think they would have the same sort of kind of protocol as you know like Star Trek you know where they can't really interfere and they have to kind of find a way of disguising themselves and what have you um but maybe you know like the matrix and the way that airplane being stood still and it, maybe i don't know it's like it's almost like a glitch isn't it uh, and if you did not if you not brought the ufo into the subject i'd be thinking to myself holy hell it, you know elon musk is right it actually is a matrix that we're living in and you had a glitch there um yeah i mean like it, until i asked my friend about it at the poker game that's exactly what i what i thought if i ever thought about it at all was like holy crap i mean like am i am i losing it i mean why why was why was that plane just sitting there i when i did think about it i i i had to make myself stop thinking about it because it was just such a crazy profound thing <laughs> to have happened that you know if they rem- remember not what was the was the propeller going around it was it was too dark to see anything like that <clears throat> you know it was and i the think even flashing time what i can remember i i can vaguely remember the lights flashing and there was a red one and a blue one one on on each wing of the airplane and i remember a, a strobe a a white strobe light uh, towards towards the back of this thing the the airplane you know whatever <laughs> whatever the hell it was and um that and the silhouette of it being an airplane uh, you know like i said it was <clears throat> it, it was still light enough outside but it was dark enough to where all i could see was just a silhouette of this thing up against the sky and uh, you know uh, my recollection my recollection of it, it it was an airplane it was the, the shape was was right the lights looked right i mean it, the sound you know it wasn't yeah it wasn't going anywhere but the, just it, not moving anywhere uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, the sound was a rumbling engine of an airplane you know like i see and hear every day in in this town you know have so. you seen any, any ufos since no, no. Well, you didn't see a UFO, but you, you... Oh, well, yeah, yeah. No, not, I haven't seen anything strange like that in the sky uh, since or before. So, no. Nope. Well, 
have you have you have you had anything else paranormal happen to you? Anything weird? You know, uh, yeah, but nothing to do with with aliens or UFOs or hovering That's airplanes, fun. anything like that. You know, I I, I had uh, Ouija board experiences when I was little. You know, and um, uh, well, you I, did the you did the Ouija board. Yeah, yeah, but Ouija without. Board. But the uh, but me and my me and my buddy, we were like nine nine or ten years old, and we we never used like the actual Milton Bradley Ouija board, you know. We uh we were watching a show like a, a TV show about these people that I don't even remember what we were watching like Unsolved Mysteries or something, I don't know, and these people made their own Ouija board with a uh, wine glass and, and and napkins and just wrote like letters and yes and no and stuff on it and uh, being stupid yeah kid. i think we me and my mates did something like that in a tent when we were little I, don't, I, I can't remember much about it but so who were you who were you with when you were doing this ouija board i know it was my my friend nolan we have gone long since gone our separate ways he, he moved away when i was right. like 11 well, you sound, you, oh, sorry, you sound went a bit funny then. You're okay. You're okay now. No, it was my friend Nolan. We were we were kind of like best friends when we were young, like I don't know, probably five years old through about ten or eleven, and he moved away. <clears throat> we always were like on the same baseball teams, and we collected Hot Wheels together and stuff like that. Uh, but he. We uh, were watching that show or whatever, and we made our own Ouija board. And for, I don't know, probably like a year or two, we would always mess with this thing. And we, we got to where we were making our own out of just whatever was laying around. It, it, I mean, it got to where we could literally like pull a quarter out of our pockets or something, put it on a table or whatever surface and say, okay, this coaster represents yes and this ashtray represents no and you know whatever and we would put our fingers on it and it would move you know and then answer all of our questions and stuff i mean it, it was it was definitely weird and <laughs> just my experience with the ouija board it it kind of opened my eyes to the fact that there's there's got to be something to like paranormal whether i don't know if it's like ghosts moving this thing i i've never seen a ghost i don't really i don't b believe in them i guess but it, it opened my eyes to there being something i i don't know how those things work but they do <laughs> you know but we we messed with this ouija board for like a long time and always talked to the same person and his name was jodge and he spelt it j-o-j very weird name i don't know why a nine and ten year old would come up with this name you know <clears throat> and it was always playful with us it was never mean and didn't it didn't you know I, we never saw anything around us moving or any weird poltergeist stuff but he would always just you know kind of mess around with us like we for instance like i remember i remember one time we we asked him can you live forever you know we were little kids and he proceeded to telling us how to make a uh a live forever elixir <laughs> and he was saying to go to the to the kitchen and get like orange peels and milk and ham and just ridiculous stuff you know like definitely wasn't a, a live forever potion but just weird things like that okay but my friend moves away i never touch a ouija board again still haven't i've never messed with one since and i was about 20 years old or so over at my girlfriend's house and she had her girlfriend or her girl with or her friend with her boyfriend come over to the house and uh you know we were uh, just hanging out or whatever and we get on the subject of paranormal stuff and uf or not ufo stuff 
what's weird is I still I still didn't even think of my UFO story because uh, I still didn't have one. I I saw an airplane, but anyways, didn't tell him about this. But we were talking about like paranormal stuff, ghost stuff, and we got on the subject of Ouija boards. And I told him about my experience with the Ouija board and said that we were talking to this guy named Josh. And my girlfriend's friend's boyfriend, he's Muslim, and he turns and looks at me like, say that name again? <laughs> I'm like, Josh. Like, how do you spell it? It's like J O J. And he's like, that's a w- weird spelling, but. There's a guy in the Quran called Jaj, but it's G-O-G, and you can look him up later, look him up. And he was some kind of, like, warlord from thousands of years ago, like, you know, some <laughs> some crazy warlord massacred, like, hundreds of thousands, or, you know, thousands, thousands of thousands of people, or, you know... Oh. He was known for something, something, you know, a bunch of crazy, murderous warlord stuff, <laughs> and here he is talking to us. I don't know if it was him or not, but it just, it's a weird thing to come up with the name Josh as a nine or ten year old. But besides that, that's really, that's about as paranormal as I get, <laughs> which is pretty damn paranormal, I guess. Hey, well, with the name Josh, if that's how you pronounce it, every single time. Yeah, that that's to, to every single time without fail. I mean, there was never any other person there, or you know. And, and you trusted I, your friend that your friend wasn't just, you know, pulling the wool over your eyes and pushing it himself. I don't see how he could have been, man. You know, people always say when they're messing with those, like, "Oh, you're messing with, you're moving it." No, I'm moving it. No, you're moving it. Yeah, I think you can feel when somebody else is moving it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, totally, totally. But this thing, I mean, it was always just the two of us, and it, it was moving. You know, I mean, that to me, I I think if there's if there's any like real tangible evidence of anything paranormal, it's it's a Ouija board. I mean, that that's just I don't know if it's like we're. <laughs> collective subconscious of the people involved moving this thing or what it is even if it's that that's pretty cool (laughs) no but uh, i would say definitely consider being hypnotized but lay off the ouija boards you know (laughs) they're not good (sighs) um but i i I think with the name i I don't think he'd spell his name wrong i if it is a he or whatever Right, Spirit. right. You know, I I think it's probably something. I just don't think it. See, that's that's what I thought, and my my thoughts on it was. But it's weird that you that your um your your friend uh, your, your your girlfriend's friend's boyfriend mm-hmm. came came up with in that exact si- situation as well. You know, these I, I find these things in life fascinating that something happens and then it brings back something from your past exactly. and it, and you think if i didn't go there or i hadn't said them few words that wouldn't have happened exactly no it's, it's still very weird in life like that totally <laughs> yeah totally but the the name spelling thing the only the only thing i can come up with is you know me and my friend were were young and I think if he would have spelled it G O G, we would have been saying Gog all the time. But I think he wanted us to say the the way his name is pronounced. That and why why he's talking to us in English, you know, that's another thing to think about. Have you tried <laughs> saying it backwards? Uh, George. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean. Do you ever have any, um, well, it's, it's a silly question because everybody has strange dreams, but do you ever have any, like, reoccurring dreams or anything as a as a child that you can remember? Besides, like, normal weird nightmares that and stuff like that, because people always have, like, those, those few yeah. reoccurring dream, dreams. <sighs> okay, well, here's an, another weird paranormal thing. 
in in my life and this involves uh my friend aaron actually who who died i i seem to have this has only happened like three times ever but i've have had dreams about someone in my life before they die and the first time i was i was in high school and i had a friend i had two friends uh aaron cass and gabe palmer rest in peace they died in a car wreck and i i wasn't super super close with them but i, I you know i was good friends with them and i worked with them uh at a telemarketing place and in my dream i had, i dreamt that i actually in my dream both of them weren't in my dream only one of them aaron was in my dream and i was we were leaving the telemarketing job and and the abstractness of of the dream i was sitting on his ribs and like it's hard to explain like i it's almost like i couldn't stop grinding into his ribs and i was breaking his ribs and <laughs> that you know that's all i can remember of the dream the next day i find out that he and gabe had died in a car wreck that night okay and that, that's that's really really weird i haven't been able to figure that one out at all okay but then it happened again <laughs> and and actually when i say again it didn't it didn't happen before they died it happened i had the dream like a little bit after they died but in my dreams the the second one i guess was i had a dream of of my mom she she died and about a week later i have a dream about her and it was just so vivid vividly real like i <laughs> i've never had a dream like it and she was was just smiling at me and i don't know like i had like just such a feeling of, of like peace i guess that i that i saw her you know and felt super happy that i i was looking at her we were smiling that we it was weird. Like we couldn't talk. Like I, I wanted to talk, but for some reason, all, all we could do was just like cheese and then just smile, you know, with, with one another. And it felt so, so real. It was such a weird feeling, you know, and I've never had a dream since like that with her. So I don't know. I, I think there's something to that, but then a third dream was with, uh, my friend Aaron and this actually was was probably probably a, a week or two before he died and not like the night of or after it was it was about a week or two before and th this is a really weird abstract dream I uh, I'm a construction worker and I use I, I saw and core concrete and I use like this really big hand saw to cut concrete sometimes. Okay, in my dream, he and Matt, actually the bass player, were in my dreams, and we were going we were supposed to play a show, and we were at a we were at a venue in my dream. We were gonna play a, a play a show, which we haven't done in like you know several years now. It's been like five or six or seven years, and again in that dream when i when i think back on it aaron he couldn't he it's almost like he couldn't talk to me and i couldn't talk to him i, I was talking to everybody else and and again it felt super vivid and real i mean it was super vivid and i i couldn't talk to anybody but for some reason or i couldn't talk to him i could talk to everybody else but for some reason when i would see him or interact with him in my dream it was always just um 
facial expressions and, and interactions with them that way. And I was supposed to be setting up my drums, but my drums turned into my handsaw from work, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And we're, we're, suppo- we're like actually trying to play the show, but I'm playing my handsaw. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not drums. It's, you know, how abstract dreams can be. But I remember as I was messing around with this handsaw, Aaron is looking at me weird in my dream, like giving all giving me all these like weird looks, like what the hell's going on? Like, and then a couple of weeks later, or whatever, he he dies of pneumonia. Um. So yeah, that I've never had any other dreams before or since those, but yeah, that's. So now I always worry if I have a dream about a loved one or something, I'm like, <laughs> I call him up like, Hey, uh, are you doing okay? <laughs> yeah. so, uh, you know, I, I've always felt like a pretty intuitive person, you know, and I, I'm an only child. I, I, I don't know. I, I never really grew up in a family that talked about paranormal stuff. I'm not religious whatsoever, you know, but I've always had good, like intuitive capabilities, you know, with, with people, I guess, and just the world around me. But that's all I chalk it up to is I, I think that there's something, something out in, in the universe and the ether man that makes you, I, I think everybody has those capabilities. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I've, I'm sure that people, you know, have had dreams about people that have died or going to die all the time. They just don't put it together. You know, uh, that's all I can think of. But. Yeah, I used to have dreams all the time where I was just falling and <laughs> just falling all the time. Nearly every single dream, I'd, I'd wake, I'd wake up from from a fall off a off a building. Same building every single time as well. Um, dreams that they are weird. Um, yeah, they are. Hey, it's, uh, it's been a really interesting story, and I, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, thank you for having me. I, I, I definitely think you should. I think you should just consider the the hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy you know. I mean, it would Did be you? amazing. Can you imagine if 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 it you it did completely work, and you you had a a memory of seeing something different than a plane? Yeah. Yeah. Give me a name and a number of somebody. <laughs> I'll go. I just I don't know where to even begin to you know to look for someone that does that. You know, yeah. that's where I live. I I'll think about it. Uh, it scares me <laughs> to to find out if something really did happen. I you know, <laughs> well I remember like a probe in my butt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's interesting in and of itself. What is your? Um, uh, uh, do you have another? Do, do, have you got a, uh, a wife or a partner? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, do, what, 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 what do they think about your Hot Wheel uh, fetish? She hates. No. <laughs> well, she thinks I spend too much money on it, which I probably do. But it'll pay off in the years to come. You know, some of those will probably be worth a, a bob or two. That's what I try to tell her. I'm like, just, just give it another twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be worth something i promise you'll be like 90 odd i'm not i'm not selling them <laughs> yeah 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 see i mean I'll, i have all these but i actually like them i collect them i yeah i can tell to trade them and sell them it's hard to get rid of them uh, you know do you have I, a favorite I, do you have a favorite That's enough. Yeah, it changes like every week. <laughs> I was I was about to grab one, but I was like, no, maybe it's this one. No, it may, uh, no. <laughs> no they, they, they are they are cool. Uh, I'd love to do that with all all my Hot Wheels, but uh, my Hot Wheels, my, my boys' Hot Wheels, but they've just got bent wheels and bits of plasticine stuck to them. They're yeah. meant to be played with. They're toys, man. <laughs> He's obsessed with like coating them in plasticine. Uh, really? <laughs> they, they don't even move some of them they just got plasticine in the wheels and it annoys the hell out of me I'm like picking plasticine out of usually oh, wait, got find Pla- it the, plasticine what's, yeah. what's that plasticine 
I, I think do you call it put, do you call it putty. Oh, okay. Putty? Really putty or something? Is that what is that what that is? Plasticine. It's like uh, an oily clay. It doesn't dry. Um, you know, like um, have you ever <laughs> seen Wallace and Gromit? Yeah. They're made out of plasticine. So he, oh. like, he likes plasticine and Hot Wheels, and uh, it's not a great combination because you, usually you find it's just the Hot Wheels just stop working because the, the, I have to unclog the wheels that are f- full of uh, clay. Plasticine. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine. I've never heard plasticine before. I, I actually dated a, a girl from Liverpool back in high school, but I, so I can, I can understand what you're saying pretty much, just, but I've never heard plasticine. <laughs> That's yeah, a weird word. You learn yeah. something new every year. Yeah, putty, clay. Uh, I think you guys must call it just clay. Do you call it just clay? It depends on what it is. I mean, like silly putty or clay or Play Doh. I don't know. Yeah, it clay. It's silly. It's definitely silly. It's silly <laughs> to give your kids it. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, Zach, thanks very much for coming on the show. Um, I will leave the links as well for your uh, channel and. Uh, your instagram but instagram is your main focus yeah yeah that's pretty much where how, i am how many followers have you got on this like like 10.4 k growing all the time wow 13.4 k yeah that's fantastic <laughs> yeah I'll, I, I i'm on your instagram i don't do enough on instagram i need to do some stuff on instagram people yeah. my, my mom keeps saying do some stuff on instagram i'm like but I make YouTube videos, Mom. You know? Right. Yeah, stick with YouTube, man. You're killing it on YouTube. I well, like your. Well, I won't like say your... killing it, but it's it's getting it's getting better. Um, yeah, man, you'll grow. You'll grow. Yeah. I like your second and third phase. It's I, I like the roundtable thing. I've been watching it. Yeah, it's, I don't it's... know if that, how I don't have much time for that. If I'm honest, I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing that. I'll probably do every now and again. Um, it's just. I, I'm, I was saying to um, to Blake the other day, I, th- there's a couple of videos I've not done now for him um, where it's just like, do I concentrate on my own channel? Mm. You know, my channel was already growing. Um, and I, I've got some third phase subscribers that have come over. Thank you, third phase subscribers. Um, but it's, um, I need to focus on this channel, you know. And I wish the boys the best of luck. And I and I'll probably if they ask me and I've got time, I will definitely uh, you know jump on that uh, team. Well, hey, I did a... tell them straight though. I you know it, it, you, you may not like what I have to say about it because if if I just think it's a blob, I'll say it's a blob. No, that's what I like about you on the channels because you you had you had one really good debunk. I forgot what it was about what it was about, but. It was that was brilliant, man. I I don't know. You you got some good some good thoughts up here. <laughs> so. I, I don't do enough debunks anymore. I might I might get back to doing a few more of them. But you know you make yeah. a lot of enemies while you're doing debunks. But people some people just don't like things being debunked. I've just put um a uh, a video out before this one. I was just telling you actually the uh, Pink Floyd uh, kind of it's just like a bit of a zany video um where um there's a a music channel that I I I use a lot of his stuff. He's a really cool guy as well. It's called CoAG Music. Uh, so any YouTubers that are wanting to get leave him alone is mine. No, he's 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 fantastic. And uh, I used a, a remix that he's done for Pink Floyd, and it's taken me probably a, nearly a full day just going around the internet and going, is that real? No, that's not real. That's not real. That's not real. And it, you know I can. The, the footage that I, is so hard to come across. Mm-hmm. So I, even probably one or two in that video, maybe not re- the real deal. You know, it might be a flare or something like that. But right. I try my best to to yeah. actually give people any good footage. And if I put something out that I think's real, and then I quickly change my mind, I'll correct myself. Right, right. So. And not afraid to go back and no, and no, say- you've got to. You've yeah. definitely got to do that yeah. in this subject. I think, I think too many people they they get stuck in you know what they originally thought about it, and they're afraid to go back and and revisit it or correct themselves. You know, it's 
I think that's that's a good thing. Thanks for, me, for having I'm me. I'm starting to realize the the only way to get kind of not proof, but to get I want to get a collection together of these stories, you know. And I think one day I might just go, oh my god, it's all starting to fit together. See, well that that's that's one thing that I kind of gravitate towards anyways, when I watch things on, uh, on YouTube, the internet, whatever about, uh, about the subject of UFOs and stuff is I, I usually like the stories more than, than footage, because I think, I think the footage is like you said, it's, it's so hard to determine if it's real or not. And, and there's not much of it anyways. It's too short. It's too short. If I, I mean, I saw a UFO once um, in Leeds, and I literally didn't. It's up on my channel, and you know, someone debunked it as a balloon, which it could well be. I have no idea, but I I saw three of them, and if you look in the footage, there is three of them. Um, but I didn't stop filming it until it uh, it stopped. So I put a little short one out. So it didn't bore everybody, but then I put, I, I just said in the description is the full video, because yeah. that was an unlisted video because it was boring, uh, uh, right. you know, because because I was trying to find it as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I I think when them sort of videos, when you see people filming UFOs, and it's just for a few seconds, yeah. and sometimes it doesn't even disappear and they stop filming. Why why did you stop filming? That's always I, my biggest question. I would I, wait and see. You know, there was third phase did that um, one the other day, and I couldn't get involved on it. And it was the, um, I it was it was an it was an advertising balloon, and I was dying what? to say that's an advertising balloon. And Blake said you you can't see the the string if you look. It's not CGI either. It's, no, it's not CGI. It's advertising balloon. And when a, when a camera's doing that. You know, it pixelates and it breaks up, when it's, and it was zoomed in a little bit as well, and it wasn't getting the string. The guy knew what he was doing. Not Blake. It's not Blake's fault. He's just reporting on it, and that's fair enough. But the guy that was filming it, he knew damn well what that was. He mm. knew that that was an advertising um, thing. <laughs> I forgot what, what do you call them? The them, you know, the banner. It, the, wasn't, it was like a, a balloon bottle of Coke thing. A giant bottle of. <laughs> A giant bottle of something, anyway. Um, you know when you see this. You know when you see the balloons in the shape of the product. Yeah. That's what yeah. It was. Um, you just couldn't see the the the, the wire attached. Yeah, and you can't when you move your camera. That. I mean, I've seen one. There is there's one where I live that comes up every year. And if I wanted to, I reckon I could really manipulate the hell out of that. Right. <laughs> If I if I started faking UFOs, they would be the best fakes. Right. <laughs> Tell you now. So you get then you then your channel will really grow. <laughs> no. That, well, that, that's the thing. If you start if you start putting out some crazy stuff, you mm-hmm. know you grow quite fast over it. But you know, you, <laughs> you've got to think about your reputation. And 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 for me, you know, I want to get noticed in the field. I've uh, I mean Jeremy Carbell bless him commented on one of my interviews a, a few days ago and i was like wow it's crazy mm-hmm. um <laughs> but yeah mate, keep going I, yeah stories. keep going with the stories because i i think those are are the most interesting not just because i have one but i think i think there's more evidence in those in those stories than there are in all of the video footage of ufos whatever combined man so yeah uh, i'm enjoying them so keep them keep them going that's the plan, mate. Yep. And anybody that's got a story, email me. I'll put the email up now. Um, just don't email me and say I've, I saw a UFO um, out the window for a and few seconds, then it went because I, I can't really do much on the back of that. If you if you if you got over paranormal stuff, then yeah, we're we're all good to go. I still want to hear your story, but if you if you got footage, send it in. Um, mate, thank you very much for coming on. Really Thanks. appreciate it. Guys, I'm Alien Addict. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, check out the Patreon page as well if you would. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.